はお座席番号中にご案内いたします本日はモーワールドメンバー日本航空をご利用いただきまして誠にありがとうございます In November of 1998, The Truman Show, starring Jim Carrey, was released in Japan. Good morning! Good morning! Oh, and in case I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. The film was centered around Carrey's character, Truman Burbank, whose life was, unbeknownst to him, part of a massive TV set. Every aspect of Truman's life was captured by hidden camera. And broadcast live to billions of viewers around the world. The people in Truman's life are all actors, chosen by the show's executive producer, played by Ed Harris. Eventually, Truman begins to realize what is happening and must decide how to react. Most of us will agree that such a show would be a major human rights violation to trick a person in such a way, showcasing their most intimate moments. Magnifying their faults, exposing their frailties, all the while pulling the wool over their eyes with misdirection. That said, I know of one somewhat similar situation which I am guilty of relishing in a story of a real life Truman show, the catfishing of Maine's most famous predator, Lorne Lynn Armstrong. Well, I just wanted to get the interview that I wanted months ago that you beat me to. Lauren doesn't want to talk to you. He knows what、but、you're I, doing. But I wanted to call him because, you know, I wanted to analyze, you know, his, his, new, his new workout videos and, uh, and uh, the, the pot pies he's making and basically just analyze his kitchen. In the film, Jim Carrey is chosen because he was an unwanted pregnancy. Now, I suppose it will be argued that Lorne, too, was unwanted. But Lorne became the target of his bizarre Truman esque tale because he was featured on To Catch a Predator, and he was the standout predator for many reasons, including the sting occurring on his birthday, his chat log being thick as a telephone book, and his grand plans for marriage and a future with 13 year old Kayla. This is not a video about a predator. I bring up Lorne for the fact that he has been broadcast online in his most vulnerable moments. Those of us who have followed his catfishing have seen his attempts at being sweet and caring. We have each been a witness to his weaknesses, namely alcohol and women. He has wept, laughed, screamed, yelled. All of this in response to ethereal relationships created by those who sought to entertain a shadow audience. Here lies the intersection where today's story begins with a man unknowingly on display to the world and an audience who delights in his struggle to maintain a grip on reality. This is the story of Nasubi. Reality programming is far from a new concept. In America back in the 1940s, Alan Funt, who became famous as the creator and host of Candid Camera, was already using the idea on radio. The American Broadcasting Company presents The Candid Microphone, the program that brings you the secretly recorded reactions of all kinds of people to all kinds of situations. No one ever knows when he's talking into the Candid Microphone. Candid microphone was the same concept as candid camera, only without the cameras. Fast forward to 1998, the same year that The Truman Show was released in Japan. January of that year saw the beginning of a segment on a TV show that I contend pushed humans to their limits much more than any before or since. Yes, even greater than laying in a vat of mung fish. Or chowing down on buffalo testes. This was the year of Susanu Denpa Shonen, and it was a specific segment which blew my mind and made me think, I gotta do a video about this.
The segment was Sweepstakes Life, and it started as many reality competition shows do, with a slew of contestants vying to be declared the winner. In this case, a room full of aspiring comedians was assembled. Typically, you might expect weeks of competition, perhaps audience participation in the way of voting for their favorite. Instead, almost immediately, a box is brought into the room, and those present are asked to each draw a ticket from the box. Only one of them will hold the winning ticket. <laughs> Nasu means eggplant in Japanese. Nasubi was given his nickname thanks to his long face. After displaying his winning ticket, he is immediately whisked away to a waiting van and given a blindfold and headphones. During the drive, the producer tells him that they have a new idea for a television show, though they are not certain yet whether it will air. They assure him, however, if it does air, Nasubi will be famous. He will be the star of the show. Eventually, they arrive at a tiny studio apartment. Nasubi is given a moment to soak in his new digs. And then, they ask him to disrobe. Everything. It wasn't just my personal sort of shame or sort of issues about nudity per se. My dad is a cop, and when I first announced that for my career choice it was going to be comedy, he was not thrilled, and we had to go through some things to get him around to the idea. And he said, the one thing that I must never do in public is strip. But he does strip. And as he stands in the room hiding his shame with a cushion, Nasabi considers the sparse furnishings. A shower, a radio, a telephone, a gas burner, a sink, a large rack of magazines, a giant stack of postcards, a small table, and a single cushion. It's important to know something about Japan. They are huge on contests. Magazine contests abound, requiring the contestants to send in postcards to win a prize. Manufacturers of all sorts of things, from snacks to toys to clothing, they run contests as a way to advertise their product. There is literally no limit to the prizes a person can win if they are persistent. The producer then asks Nasabi what he thinks is required of him. Uh, something related to prize contests? And what is the one thing he wants most in the world? My clothes? Then it registers. <laughs> Nasabi will have to win his clothes back. Well, yes and no. What they actually want is for Nasabi to win his freedom by accumulating 1 million yen in prizes. This is approximately 10,000 US dollars. Oh, and one more hitch. He has to live on the food that he wins. This is a reality show. If there's one thing that we've learned from so-called reality shows, it's that the level of realness varies. Well, starvation is a good word for it. The staff got together and would give me basically a very simple little bread each day, so I had bread and water essentially for the first two weeks. But then as soon as the results started to come in, 
Then that stopped and everything shifted over entirely to things that I could win through the sweepstakes. Until Nasabi can accumulate the total prize amount, he isn't allowed any outside contact. Not with his family, not with his friends. They tell him to put tapes in a little camera every two hours and record himself, and they will come and pick up the tapes once a day. As they close the door, Nasabi screams, Wait, wait, is this for real? <laughs> Nasibi had not signed a contract, and he could have simply refused to the terms. But he would later say that he had nothing better to do. He set about entering contests and was entering two to three hundred a day in short order. One of the most real aspects you begin to notice is how thin he becomes in the first few episodes. おはようございます。うん、6日目の朝を迎えました。石焼きも食いてない。頭の中が食べ物でいっぱいです。何でもいいから検証渡ってくれ。After two weeks, he won some fiber jelly, a sugary snack, and foil packets. A couple days later, he won a large bag of rice. When the postman drops it off, he dances like an insane person. Nasibi was well aware of the camera filming him, and he certainly had an entertainer's mindset. But there's no question he was legitimately delighted to have such a staple food at long last. There was, however, one glaring problem. Nasibi had no pot to cook the rice in. Initially, he attempts to eat the rice uncooked. This, he realizes, isn't going to work. He next puts some rice in one of the foil packets, fills it with hot water, and lets it sit overnight. In his own words, Mazui. Disgusting. Eventually, he figures out that if he lets the makeshift pot sit near the flame of his gas stove, it will warm the water enough to create a soft rice porridge. Nasabi is in heaven. I could eat delicious rice every day. I remember how good that felt. And then there was this slow trepidation as it started to vanish. And then it ran out. And the only food substitute that I'd been able to win in a sweepstakes was 
dog food. ドッグフードです。俺を犬にしたいのかよ。俺は犬か。私は犬じゃない。食ってみよう。スナック菓子のように。すると。The next thing it is important to know about Japan at the time is that the country was in the middle of a terrible recession. Because of their love of sweepstakes, some wondered whether one could live entirely on sweepstakes winnings. When Sweepstakes Life debuted, it was an instant hit. Nasubi had no idea he was on TV. He believed what he had been told. That he'd record some videotapes and someday, maybe, it would end up on the air. Nasubi's groin had to be covered by a cartoon image of an eggplant that floated around as he moved. Goofy sound effects and colorful, sparkly words accentuated the humorous moments. This occurred even when he was shown to be despondent. Every opportunity to make him appear ridiculous was exploited for the entertainment of the audience. And just how many people watched Nasubi? Consider this Game of Thrones would regularly garner 9 million viewers. Nasubi had an audience of about 16 million viewers. This in a country roughly the size of California. It's hard to not laugh along, particularly when you witness the pure joy that Nasubi exudes from his prize winnings. We all do goofy things when nobody is watching us. Nasubi is no different. Except people were watching. A lot of people. I mean, that was maybe a time when Japan was going through some things and they needed to sort of do that. Roughly 50 years of prosperity had finally come to a close and people were really uncertain about their futures. I think people just tended to watch the show and say, hey, I got it bad, but look at Nasubi, he's got it worse. Now there's a lot more awareness of the weak and the people who need extra support. I don't think that the average Japanese that they would think it was funny that there was a man naked in a room somewhere. In the span of 15 months, Nasubi won hundreds of prizes. Most of them were useless Spice Girls tickets, women's panties, a bicycle. He won a television, but had no cable service or antenna. He won a really cool looking train simulator game, including a special controller. Eventually, he won a PlayStation and he played the game for three days straight. Then, it occurred to him that he was wasting time and he put the system to the side with his other winnings. Aside from the panties and a pair of shoes that were too small, he never did win any other clothes, and he spent the entire time nude. Weeks. Turned to months, and over time it appeared that Nasubi was becoming less and less sane. His hair was wild, and he grew a shaggy beard. After winning a stuffed seal, he began talking to it and taking it for walks around the apartment. An action figure from a boxing anime became his teacher, and he would have sparring matches with it in the morning and philosophical conversations in the afternoon. やるときはやるしかねえんだよ。それを教えるために俺はこの研修生活にやってきたんだよ。わかるか？そうですよね。男ならやるしかないですよね。やるときは歴史さん本当にこれから心の押し出さんとして死体押し出し申し上げますんで
Dude looked like he had lost it. This was less a reality show and more akin to a sort of social experiment. You have an imprisoned man forced to endure starvation and solitary confinement. There was no lock on the door. I was naked, so I would have had to go outside naked to seek help. But I don't think that's what kept me in there. The only thing I really have to say is, I said I'd do it, and I do what I say. There's a phrase, the Japanese spirit, which is just that you sort of endure things. When you're given something, whether it's easy or whether it's hard, you're obligated to follow it through. Nasubi did finally win $10,000 worth of prizes, and it took him about a year. When he reached his goal, producers didn't tell him anything about it. Instead, they snuck into his apartment in the middle of the night, gave him some clothes, put a blindfold on him, and took him out to a car. Nasubi seemed to think that this was a good thing. He was laughing and smiling. But when he was finally told to remove his blindfold... Next time, we will discover exactly what was in store for Nasubi. I can tell you this, it doesn't get better. Be sure to subscribe if you're not already. Hell, hit the notification bell if you'd like to know the moment the rest of Nasubi's story is uploaded. Thank you to everyone who likes, subscribes, and comments. Big warm fish thanks to my channel members and patrons. Your support is the number one reason I can afford to be here making content. We are growing fast. I believe we may have overtaken Danny Gonzalez as the fastest growing channel on YouTube. At least, that's what I keep telling myself. I'll see you next time. Bye.